the time has come for my people to go. I'm not a queen, I'm a servant of the people. I'm not a king, I'm a servant of the people. It's what the people demand, and we gonna keep fighting till we get that land. I'm not a queen, I'm a servant of the people. I'm not a king, I'm a servant of the people. It's time to rise to get what we want, we got to organize. Welcome to the Pants Little Podcast, brought to you by the All African People's Revolutionary Party. Uh, All African People's Revolutionary Party was uh, founded in 1968, uh, Kwame Nkrumah, among others, because uh, uh, we're, fight, we're fighting for Pan-Africanism, and we define Pan-Africanism as the total liberation and unification of Africa under scientific socialism. Uh, today here, we're with uh, Joanne from Black Lives for Peace. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about AFRICOM and the 33 program, among others, as well as the October uh, action. And before we get started, we always like to honor our ancestors because we wouldn't be where we are and we wouldn't be able to fight for what we do without them. So, as you know, so our ancestors for, for this episode will be Sanity Belair and Peter Tosh. Oh, yes. So we have uh, Suzanne Sanité Bel Air, and she was known as the Tigress of Haiti. She was born in Saint Dominique in 1781. She was an a Frenchy or a mixed race free person of color. She committed class suicide in that a Frenchies at the time tended to support enslavement of Africans, and she made a commitment to be on the front lines of the liberation struggle in Haiti. She became a sergeant and her husband, Charles Belair, was lieutenant in Toussaint Louverture's army. The Belairs were captured and sentenced to death after being brought to Cap Haitian. Women tended to be decapitated and men usually died by firing squad. Sanité demanded she die in the same vein as her husband. She wanted to die with dignity like a soldier. Peter Tosh, he was a cultural worker who recognized that art should be a force to serve the people's class. He wasn't gonna give it up until Africa and Africans were free. He utilized his talents to advocate for Pan-Africanism, anti-imperialism and anti-capitalism. He recognized the primacy of Africa and understood that the world's liberation was dependent on Africa's liberation. So most famously, he had the song African uh, as long as you're, he said, man, as long as you're a black man, you're an African. And he named different places around the world. He said, you're African, you're African. And so he advocated for that in his artistic life. And he did that until the day of his passing. And those are the ancestors we are honoring today. Ashe. Ashe. Thank you, Jelani, for being here. Thank yeah, you so for much. Having me. Thank you so much. So. I know we have a short amount of time. So if you can get into the importance of BAP, uh, firstly, your involvement with BAP, how you came to be involved with BAP as an organization. Yeah, so um, I got involved with BAP in 2017, I believe. Um, either 2017 or 2018, I'm forgetting now. Um, it's been a while. Um, but I got involved, um, because I was, I was doing activism in a lot of different ways, but I always felt like the groups that I was involved in really were not focusing on the international dimensions of Black liberation and kind of, it seemed like Black people stopped like mattering almost at the at the like US border. Um, and so that was a problem for me. And um, I was so I personally, um, when BAP was founded, um, I jumped in. I was like, okay, this is seems like something that's interesting to me. So um, after that, I got involved in the outreach team, which um, basically helped create some of the structures for um, 
the we have the toolkit that like helps people communicate that help people communicate in um, whenever they went out to events or you know um, meetings and stuff like that and so um yeah so i worked there for probably well i'm actually still part of it but less involved now but maybe two two years that i was more involved in that and then i transitioned um over to uh founding helping like bring into fruition bap new york with the help of margaret um Karinja, and others um and so yeah we ended up um with the uh, support and backing of ajamu who's really um pushing us to um really make that more local and to have more of a local focus um is when we um started moving towards these local chapters where we are still working on basically having a full uh, outward facing uh, communication with the community and essentially letting them know what's happening in terms of their rights and the rights of black people all around the world and how they are being trampled upon by the US government um, and its and its policies towards our people. Um, and that includes policing, it includes um, it includes AFRICOM and the way that AFRICOM serves to control the militaries of um, African people. And so, yeah, that's what we're doing right now. And I know one of the things that BAP encourages is for folks to join other organizations. So. Um, Black Alliance for Peace is an organization, but it also includes a collective of other organizations. So while we have this collaborative work of Black Alliance for Peace, why would it be important to do other work in organizations? What connections are made there? Yeah, I think so. Black Alliance for Peace is basically focused on re-energizing the traditional anti-war stance of the Black liberation movement. Um, and as I described earlier, there's been a lot of uh, loss that's happened in terms of that radical internationalism. So the first step for um, city alliances and, and local chapters is to be connected with like-minded organizations um, that are already doing this work in their community and have a an internationalist stance um, and to really bring together people in the same area who are who have the same perspective and are doing this work already um, so that's super important because we're a lot of times we're working in silos, we're working in ways that are not connected to each other, even though we have the same ideology. So the good thing about BAP is that we're a collective of organizations and individuals who have the same perspective or have similar perspectives. Um, and we're really trying to work together um, to inform the community again about what's happening um, and also to revive that, that internationalist anti-war stance within our movement and within the community. And that's something that we desperately need because people think that, you know, Obama was, people still think that Obama was the greatest thing since sliced bread. And they still think that, you know, Biden is, amazing and i mean so there's a lot of work that we need to do in our communities to to really inform people about what's happening and that these people are not really on our side word word so a major campaign that's happening now is the month against africom so let's talk about 
the Roots of Afcon, what AFRICOM is, and then another campaign, particularly locally on the East Coast, would be uh, talking about the 1033 program and fighting against that. So with the connections there, let's first talk about AFRICOM because that's, you know, as Africa is the root of everything and is primary, particularly for the AAPRP and other organizations, but uh, looking at the need for Africa to be liberated, but these forces of AFRICOM are there. So we obviously need to fight that, but then locally we have these police forces uh, largely, which are trained by imperialist forces like the IDF, et cetera. So there are connections there. So let's discuss AFRICOM, the campaign, uh, the month against AFRICOM, and then we can get into 1033. Yeah, definitely. Um, so AFRICOM was founded by the Bush administration um, in 2007, um, which was near the end of his, his term. Um, and then it was expanded under Obama and has been continued under Biden um, and Trump. Um, so it's, there's really been a continuation of this program of this military um, regime um, in Africa. And what it essentially does is it claims to train and you know, build up the military capacity of of military organizations in in Africa, in African states. Um, so they're militaries, and but in order to what they say is to you know fight terrorism and to you know create a more secure um, African continent. Um, but we know that. They're the reason why that the United States government and Europe, the European governments um, like France are really the reason why um, a lot of states in Africa are unstable um, or have, you know, whatever types of violence that they're pointing to to justify these um, these programs. Um, so yeah in terms of the they continuously like in terms of eritrea for instance who has denied africom um because they the, the united states wants it to seem like it's this voluntary thing where you know these governments are really asking us to 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 join and they are um you know this is something that's that's of their own free will, but we see what happens when people, um, when or when excuse me, when governments say say no, and Eritrea now has sanctions, um, and has been, you know, mercilessly attacked by the U.S. government. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot there in terms of of AFRICOM um, and what their real goal is, is to continuously control the African continent and its, and its resources. Ooh, and connecting the 1033 program with AFRICOM in, but looking at what the objective of fighting 1033 is, like what uh, BAP is doing to participate in that. Um, definitely. So 1033 is essentially a defense department program that gives military weaponry to, to local police forces. Um, and they basically are like, oh, okay, you need a, you know, huge tank. You need like grenade launchers. You got it. Um, and so we know that these are things that, first of all, police shouldn't exist. Um, they are really scourges on our community and they, um, they kill people. They kill people, especially 
people who have mental health issues, people with disabilities are more likely to be in the crossfire of police within our communities. So not only are they racist and ableist and misogynist, um, they are really taking away from our ability to govern ourselves. We lack sovereignty, just as um, people in African states lack sovereignty over their own militaries and their own countries' resources. Our communities also lack sovereignty um, because we don't control these police. Um, and they, they're basically running, they run amok in our communities, um, taking lives and hurting our community members. Um, so I think that that's one thing that is really a, a connection um, and that I think people should take away is that it's not just happening over there in some other place. Um, these, this anti-blackness and the cap serving capitalism, serving um, the capturing of resources um, and the like mindless pursuit of the profit for the personal gain of a few and a few elites in government um, is really devastating black people everywhere. Um, and that shows up in the ex continuing expansion of the military, the inability of uh, the US government, uh, federal legislatures to, or, or lack of desire as well, to really rein in any sort of military spending. Um, this, the logic is continuously to expand, to really fight imaginary like boogeymen. Like it's like, there's nothing, like the only reason there's anything is because you're funding, you're funding um, organizations um, that are quote unquote, these terrorist organizations. And then you're, then you turn around and say, look, these people are a threat. Um, and so we've been, we've seen that again, again and again with, you know, ISIS, with Al Qaeda and other organizations, um, how they fund, how they fund them and then use them as a pretext for war and their continued, the continued expansion of the military. So, yeah, I think that what's really important for us is to focus is to focus on the lack of sovereignty that we have and the fact that we need to have that sovereignty back in terms of our communities controlling the way that we deal with the issues that uh, that interpersonal issues that happen in our community and not to be depending on police for for that and the way that 1033 connects to that is that the government in terms of the amount of money that they're always pushing for and the billions and billions of dollars, um, almost trillions now that they are authorizing every year um, to fight these imaginary um, wars and threats are then coming back to our communities, flooding our communities in the form of military grade weaponry. And not only is it, you know, these tanks and, um, and you know, other military weaponry, grenade launchers and things of that nature, but it's also a mindset of, of military occupation that gets reinforced when they when they receive this type of when they receive this type of um, military grade weaponry and this funding. I, I you know the lack of sovereignty that uh, Af the Africans here on the that Africans on the continent and here in the diaspora have. But wait, when we have African when we have African presence, African mayors, uh, uh, 
commentary and so forth. Okay, make a little more detail about like why that sort of represent that bourgeois representation uh, is it enough to actually have that sort of power uh, over for us. Um, yeah, I think that the representation that I mean, so, okay, so we saw like earlier, um, I think it was last year where, you know, the people in in Congress, like they were wearing the Kente cloths and they like took the knee and people were like, I feel like some people were honestly like, oh, okay, like they're even these, even these, like Nancy Pelosi is with us. Um, and, but it's just, it's all performative because um, folks on the federal and local level who are black are really just tools in what is the like white supremacist control that this government has and really also corporations who who um, controlled uh, government officials, the stranglehold that they have over um, our, our resources, um, our time um, and things of that nature. Um, so when, I mean, Barack Obama was elected, um, he ran on like anti-war platforms, but expanded war to several other countries um, and also murdered um, Gaddafi in Libya, which created, you know, slavery in that or re reignited slavery in that in that region. Um, when we look at, you know, um, people like Lori Lightfoot, who have like all the identity check marks, she's a woman, she's Black, she is LGBT, um, <laughs> but we see how her her reign is really not much of a departure, if at all, um, from from her predecessors and the fact that those communities are still are still under, you know police terror um, and disinvestment. Um, so yeah, I mean, even when we look at, I feel like even when we look at um, businesses and this like cult of personality around celebrities, it like, like everybody has been, you know, you know, talking about like Dave Chappelle and like, you know, Beyonce is always a topic of discussion. And it's just like, these people are not, um, these people are invested in their own coin, their own bag. And they really don't give a fuck. Like they truly like, and you can see it through their actions and you can see it through the fact that they don't stand up um, for our communities in any real substantive ways. Um, so, I mean, on all levels, like people, the, the, I mean, it's, they tell you who they are repeatedly. Um, and it's, I think it's our job to Rem, like find ways to really communicate to that, that to people in effective ways, just because they are where they are. These people are where they are, like, because they have some, some talent, some talent that is like internationally recognized. And so what happens is that people get, I think, blinded by, by that cult of personality and that celebrity um, on all levels, including like politicians, but but you know also celebrity figures, um, but it's 
I and I kind of been reading stuff online about you know moving away from celebrity culture versus like engaging with it and like trying to move people through like so I I don't know where I fall on that yet but um but yeah they they're definitely not here to save us they're not here for us and that's why it's so important for us to be clear about what it is that um we want which is the liberation of all black people and all colonized people um on this planet and an end to white supremacy um and communicate how we are what steps we're going to take um to make people's like material lives better but also to inform them about what's happening now and why they should care about other people because the fact that they're the issues that they're facing are similar to the issues that we're facing but also the causes and the reasons why are are the same um and yeah we definitely have a lot of work to do um in order to get to to get there and to move towards um that dialogue of moving the this anti-war black anti-war stance um into the mainstream but i think that black alliance for peace has done such a good job um of of really elevating the conversation um and so yeah i'm really i'm really happy to to um be here to to discuss some of that we we are glad you're here and to your point one's actions are going to determine whether or not you're for the people's class one's identity is not the definition of that and the capitalist system that upholds that identity is primary and as you mentioned you named examples uh, barack obama went to africa he went home and he himself has continental african blood if you want to be specific he went home to ghana and said do not blame colonialism for the problems happening in africa he is a not pan africanist in any way shape or form he upholds a particular system that is anti people's class so we can't depend on someone's identity to represent any sort of liberatory struggle and i think uh, looking at the work of bap looking obviously at the ideology that the aaprp holds um, other revolutionary organizations it's important to make that distinction between the people's class and the anti people's class and, and speaking and speaking of uh, communication we uh, we mentioned earlier that you have the uh, black alliance for peace has a toolkit for especially, especially for the uh, a month of action against against Africom. So, how, so for example, we'll put the link uh, in the description for this, for this podcast, so you can check it out and share. So, if if anyone wanted to to do this, like what, how would they go about doing so? Um. So yeah. So the way that people can um, get involved is by going to blackallianceforpeace.com slash us out of Africa. Um, and it will take you to the landing page where we discuss AFRICOM. There's information about what AFRICOM is. Um, there's um, links to essentially uh, events that have occurred already. Um, so you can go back and, and look at some videos that um, Black Alliance for Peace has done um, that are really informative. Um, so the demands are one the complete withdrawal of us forces from africa two the demilitarization of the african continent three the closure of us bases around the world and four that the congressional black caucus oppose us africa command africom and conduct hearings on africom's impact on the african continent with the full participation of members of us and african civil society so it's like pretty basic it's like pack up your shit 
go home, like get out of, get out of Africa, US side of Africa. Um, so yeah, so go to that website. It has all of the information um, and you can, I believe there is also something you can sign as well to, to add your name. And I think that's here as well. Um, and then you can also join the newsletter, the US Out of Africa Network newsletter to get more information um, regularly about what's about what's happening. So, so, so we so we noted the the, the campaigns for Afri for US Out of Africa and against the Africom as well as the 1033 program here in, in the United States. Um, of what other work has been done for Africans like elsewhere aside from the continent and in the United in, in the US. So specifically in the United States? Uh, outside of the US. Oh, okay. Okay, got it. So um BAP also has their Americas Committee, which focuses on the Americas. I mean people in the United States like to call America. Well, I mean, honestly, it's all it's all colonial names anyway. Um, but they we have the Americas Committee where um, it's the Caribbean, South America, um, as well as North America. Um, and so we've, we've done a lot of work on Haiti or they have done a lot of work on Haiti um, in terms of really connecting with people um, with organizers on the ground um, and the movements that are taking that are taking place and have con have been taking place for many many years now that that you know mainstream media has really ignored um, and really been elevating um, those voices and um, really collaborating with folks um, in also in Spanish speaking um, parts of you know the Americas, um, you know, people in Colombia, people in um, Venezuela, Nicaragua, and stuff like that. Um, and so that's been really, that's been really good to see. They've been really intentional about, and I'm saying they just because I'm not in that, in that, uh, like I was, I'm not like a big part of that working group. So I don't know all the details. But um, in terms of Haiti, I think that we have been a, uh, our organization has been really a, a voice um, in collaborating um, with other folks who are, who are really doing this work um, and have been doing this work around Haiti um, and have also elevated issues that are happening um, in, in South America and Central America as well. That's right, because Africans, we're, we're everywhere. We're, we're everywhere, so we gotta, we gotta organize where we are. And, and think of the, I think of the phrase, act local, think global. I think that's a big part of what Black Lines for Peace is doing. So thank you so much for that. Yeah, definitely. And I think that what's really, and uh, this goes back to the point around like, um, bringing together organizations that are, that are like-minded and doing this work. Um, so like Afro Resistance, for, for instance, they really help BAP um, and help the work um, and move the work forward um, in their organizing and also in assisting with translation um, in different languages um such as spanish um and so i mean there that's a big barrier for our people organizations like um after resistance really um propel the work forward and in their own organizing as as well as in assisting organizations um like bap in terms of translation um because that's a really big issue for our communities, the colonizers have really separated us um, in terms of language as well. Um, and especially for people in 
the United Snakes, the this country, they are um they a lot of us don't have um access to understanding these different languages because we're not taught because we are not um really supposed to know um these and be able to communicate with others and that's an intentional thing and so yeah i think that 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 a lot of work um has been done um to make it so that we can really communicate um with um individuals um and that other individuals can communicate with us um and i think that's a really important part of this liberatory work that needs to be built out even more in my opinion so um yeah what does organization mean to you versus mobilizing that is a good question so mobilizing i feel like is more having people come out to actions and to really show up and to show face and it's usually either to um have presence in the community or to pressure a, a particular target to go our way in terms of whatever demand uh, we're putting forward um and that usually happens um either on email social media and people have flyers and stuff like that so um people get involved in that way and so when people go to these events i think that's when they're getting mobilized um, in terms of organization organization is more of a consistent um it's more of a consistency more of a um, building out a structure to to like create a shared vision of what we want to do and implementing and executing and executing that so um they work together um because you can't mobilize something without well you can sometimes but um for the most part you can't really mobilize without being organized in some way and then you can't i feel like you can't continue to be organized and to have that um that structure without things happening without you know a pressure um building in terms of how we're in the community or how we are um pressuring folks to to like either in some instances do their jobs or to or to you know betray what their what their jobs are really telling them to do in terms of if we're talking about like politicians or you know these these um agencies um so yeah i mean they they work together they work um in tandem and yeah i think that that's what i think that's what organization is versus mobilizing um and i think that organizing is is um is difficult it's it take it's like different iterations like you have to keep working towards um making it so that you know more and more people can be involved that you know labor gets distributed that um the mobilizing that we want to happen actually occurs in and in, in response like in a timely way in response to something um and really building out that capacity and and that um presence so yeah i think i think they're both super important. Okay, okay, one more question. So if <laughs> one wanted to join the Black Alliance for Peace, what would be the tools to do that? How can they reach someone in BAP to join? And what is the mission statement of BAP so people are very clear about what they're joining? 
So I'm reading from the website right now. So it says Black Alliance for Peace seeks to recapture and redevelop the historic anti-war, anti-imperialist and pro-peace positions of the Black radical movement. And we do that through educational activities, organizing, movement support, um, organizations and individuals. Oh, this is the important part. So organizations and individuals in the Alliance work to oppose the militarized domestic state repression and politics of destabilization and the permanent war agenda. So if you are, you know, if you are pro military, if you think that the military should be in all sectors of the globe, the US military, then this isn't the, I, this isn't the place for you. Um, this is not, that's not what we're doing here. Um, we are against war. We are against US imperialism and um, we are for the liberation of our people. So that's, that's our mission. Um, and, you know, we've, as I said before, we're, we've been pushed away from that through like the forces of capitalism and, you know, the Red Scare and, um, you know, the war on our, our communities, Contel Pro, all of those things. Um, and so it's time for us to, it's, it's been past time and we are already working on it, but it is time for us to recapture that anti-war um, agenda within our community. So if you want to get involved, um, go to blackallianceforpeace.com and then you click on get involved and join BAP. And so make sure that you look again, look at our mission statement and see if it aligns with you because we don't, we don't want somebody who's, who wants, who loves the military. Sorry about it. We don't want that um, because that's not what we're about. Um, and that's, if you are, you know, trying to change that, maybe we could talk, but we're not, we're not bringing in people who are, who are um, pro-war, pro-military. Um, so check out, um, so check out blacklinesforpeace.com and then slash join or blacklinesforpeace.com and then you can go to get involved and press join BAP. And when you do that, go to our Principles of Unity, check it out as well and see what we're about, um, see what we stand for. Um, yeah. And then when you are on join, the Join BAP page, you can like click through and see which one applies for you because we have one, we have a application for Africans and then we have ones who are like in solidarity, who are allies or accomplices or whatever you wanna call that. Um, so yeah. Thank you so much for being here with us. And the AAPRP actually is a member of BAP. So uh, we are glad to be doing this work, absolutely. And we're definitely glad to be doing that with you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, AAPRP, doing the work, always doing the work, and really appreciate appreciate that, and appreciate y'all for having me, um, and to be in struggle with y'all, and to and to collaborate. So, and as we always say, join an organization. We do have other podcasts that we like to shout out because there's a wealth of information out there. So we have the Revolutionary African Women podcast, which is the last Saturdays of the month, the Forward Ever podcast, you can check out on Spotify, Our Ancestors Voices, which are Shakur and Ajamu. And they've been having an ongoing community defense series. And of course, the Pan-African Weekly News that is coming from our comrades in the New Mexico slash Tiwa territory chapter. So you can check all of those things out. Uh, again, check out BAP, Black Alliance for Peace, and Forward Ever, 
backwards never. I don't know if anyone has anything to add to that, but yeah. Forward. Forward. <laughs>